Do you know who have actually got lined up for the podcast today? Go on. A Love Island winner. Let me guess. I can't guess. <laughs> it's Jess Hayes. <gasps> oh I know. my God. She's amazing. I love her. So excited. Yeah. Welcome back to Cracking On With The Sun. Now we saw Jake leave very swiftly last night and we're going to give it as much time as the show did last night to talk about it because it was just over in about two seconds. Yeah, I mean, Maya got dragged out of bed for that. Um, I feel like I've been dragged out of bed for this, so today's going to be great. And you look like Maya <laughs> Turner, may I say, the glow. <laughs> Maya Maybe. would not rock up in yeah. a jumper. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say granny jumper again. We're not having this as a well, theme, we've got are a bit we? Of shoulder, so, you know, it's giving. <laughs> um, so, what was also giving last night? And I wanted to rip my skin off. It was so Whoa, awkward. Okay. Callum and Molly <gasps> doing couples therapy just in a group setting, just around the fire pit. It's like when you're, you know, when you're watching something and you just, you can't stop, so sort of through your fingers, you just can't stop looking. I mean, everyone was just in it for the drama watching around and it did turn into this couples therapy, but in front of a group. Yeah. Never mind the people at home. Yeah. It was in front of their friends in the villa it was like you know when you're at dinner or something or you're in the pub and the couple at the table next door to you are rowing and you just sort of like we'll just pretend we're having a conversation but actually we're listening to what's going on here but then toby i think it was tried to be like it's always better to have those sorts of conversations <laughs> as if that's ever in a group <laughs> because it just helps and callum's like yeah i know no this is good chat, this. Welcome to Couple of Therapy. Yeah, sorry, we're just talking about our problems. It is, 100%. It's a two-way thing. It was yeah. a very mutual ending. And you've obviously got issues with me, but I'm not going gonna... to... I, I loved it, mainly because we found a lot more out about their breakup. We did. And, and it was so interesting to see the dynamics. A lot of people, I don't, I don't know what you think about this, but a lot of people were saying that they didn't like Molly's sort of confrontational tone. Some of them went as far to say that she was a bit bullyish I think that's too far personally but I do think that she lost her cool a little bit I think you could see that you know the like bottled up rage yeah that has been brewing yeah but I think that he he handled it well do you know what it it read like to me is you know when you've had an argument with someone already and then you go home and you think about all the things you could have said or how you should have <laughs> phrased so it better. True. You're in the shower and you're like, oh, I wish I'd said um, you need to articulate yourself better and things like that, which probably don't really roll off the tongue. I feel like they've had that argument many times yeah. and she is now having her opportunity to have the same argument again, having actually thought about what she would want to say because yeah. I agree like it was she was completely in control of that situation yeah. and the vibe that I got off Twitter was people were like Molly is a smart girl and she thinks that Callum is less than smart it was very it, she was sat down <laughs> what and did I call him up. young Dublin fan yeah I think he is like that and I can't help but fancy him I know, it's, I know it's really bad, but I do. I think he, he's obviously very good looking, but yeah. it was that kind of cheeky charmer um, when they, during this discussion, which I, I shouldn't like, but I did, when he sort of kept smirking and like he was laughing yeah. when it was all going on. And just like, you know, you, you could actually see how much he likes her. Yeah. Um, and I, I found it quite endearing. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, ITV, Amanda wants to come in as well. Can I? Can I? Oh, God, um, I couldn't think of anything worse. I don't know how they do it. Do you know what um, I was thinking is, um, when he was talking about how he wanted to keep focusing on his career, one of the things that I have heard is that um, Molly wasn't necessarily loving the kind of business that he's been doing recently. So he's been doing a bit more of that net marketing on Instagram. Um, and she likes real things that you can touch and feel and sell and influence and that kind of thing. So she wasn't quite sure about this new focus that he had, okay. is what I'm hearing. So Ooh. I think that's another flashpoint that they had in their rows. Yeah. Um, the, uh, it, yeah, it was just brilliant viewing. Uh, awful for them having to sort of go through it and everyone else watching yeah um the, and then it went from that to suddenly up on the balcony and she's snogging chris <laughs> i mean chris obviously likes a sort of a little bit of 
danger, a little bit of yeah. uh, chaos, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Because there he was just, he walked into the argument and he says, mm. oh, well, this is a good time to chatter up. Let's yeah. go up to the terrace. That's just brilliant. And also, again, we've talked about this, but they're all, these lads are all pulling these such obvious moves, like the stare into my eyes and fall in love thing. I mean, even I've had that said to me and I am obviously no Molly Smith. Um, <laughs> and... Then they snog, and I mean, brilliant. I think it looked quite forced. She, she was like, she "Oh, was are we like, kissing? Are we?" And then she, I, I thought her facial expression looked like she was kind of laughing during the kiss. Like yeah, she just, she just thought, "Oh, this is happening," and she's in it, and she's got to just go with it. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, he's... she's probably like, "Okay, okay, ca- ca- chaos, but fine." <laughs> um, I think that was the whole the, the whole section of the show last night. That section was just chaos. Yeah, I think it's the best way to describe it. And again, to be slightly cynical, is this perhaps the game plan? Is this the script, the storyline that they've wanted to run with? Because it all seems sort of too chaotic. Yeah. They've now got this kind of triangle going on. They're they're airing out their differences yeah. um, in front of the group. Is it all about them getting back together yeah. after their split yeah ekin sue we had a conversation with her she was talking to the son and saying that she's very good friends with um molly and she was absolutely gobsmacked to see her go in and callum as well and she said that absolutely not it's not faked they moved out of the house that they bought together they've been living separately uh, she, molly's been furious at callum and how he's been acting on yeah. the outside um with the girls and all of that we've had a little bit of that from her haven't we yeah. in the villa um so if i can sue i think it's i i believe i can sue well i can sue is obviously queen of chaos so if if i can sue says that this chaos is real then <laughs> she <laughs> knows <laughs> she absolutely knows more chaos hinted at last night um was that little convo between georgia harrison and toby where he hinted that it all went wrong with him and Chloe Burrows. Yes. Because she'd done something which broke his trust. So hard. So, like, it's one of those difficult ones, isn't it? But really, she was she talking to other guys? Really? No, it's just, like, something happened and then trust went. But what happened? <laughs> something happened, trust went. He was sort of beating around the bush. I mean, it, it went round in circles, yeah. didn't it? And you, you were like, right, so did he cheat? Georgia, brilliant, the way that she was kind of questioning him. Because it was like, well, did she cheat or not? So it sounds like she did. Well, he basically said, didn't he? Um, she broke my trust. Trust. And then Georgia kept pushing him. And there was him. a moment. There was a, a something happened. Yeah. This event. And Georgia said, did she cheat on you? Was it one night? And that kind of thing. And it sounded like something happened on one night. Yeah. Um, so, so what I'm hearing, obviously, Twitter is obsessed with the fact that Chloe needs to go into that villa. She's always <sighs> been be one of viewers' top picks to get into that all-star villa. And now, I think she tweeted the other day being like, guys, please, I've never had so many messages. Um, so I had a little chat earlier with some people at Love Island and was like, look, could this happen? Is it too late? Have you locked down this cast? And they said, we are still actively speaking to many islanders. <gasps> Because just like real Love Island, civilian Love Island, it's all about reacting to situations. Yeah. And reacting to who's suddenly single or who's not actually fancying the person that they thought they might. So, I mean, it it could happen. Like, if Chloe's up for it. Insane, I would love it. I think if Chloe said, yeah, go on then, um, uh, they're obviously going to have her in with welcome arms. I don't know if if this is a clue that she is going in, but... There's been a, a lot of big names that have just headed off on a holiday in January. So Faye Winter is one of them. Yeah. And don't you think it's a good idea to get a bit of a, a glow, a nice tan before you head into the villa? Get used to being your, in your bikini looking fab yeah. before you waltz on over yeah, and go the, into the I, villa in South Africa. I think as well, just what a great way to try and keep it secret. You know, for example, Liberty threw it, um, flew in from Abu Dhabi where her mum lives. She hadn't been in, in Britain, so people thought, oh, maybe she's not going in and yeah. all that kind of thing. So, yeah. Because oh. you do want it to be a surprise. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. it's exciting when you kind of get that. And yeah. speaking of, we had uh, the bombshell at the end of the episode last night, yeah. which was Joshua Ritchie yeah. going in from Series 1. What were your initial thoughts of him being in there? I loved him on his original series, but back then... 
his vibe was just, I think he was, he was one of the youngest. He was the real hot pick boy band guy. If you remember, he had those baby blues. Um, he ended up coupling up with, yeah. with a series of girls who were older than him. And I think he made the final in a friendship couple with, um, uh, what was her name? The girl who um, hooked up with Zayn Malik. Is it not Jeff? I thought it was Jess that he was with. Because oh, they had a thing, I'm sure that they did. Oh, yeah, multiple multiple people, but loved him then. I'll be interested to see how he's changed, because I think he massively will. And obviously, what's also interesting is he has been one of the islanders that in recent years has joined OnlyFans. So this was one of the big debates around would Love Island have OnlyFans creators on the show. Now, he's not on there anymore, but certainly he's made quite a lot of money on there. And he even featured on Olivia Atwood's documentary talking about his OnlyFans account and the kind of videos that he was making and the extremes that he ended up going to on there. Um, to make money. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that's going to add another really interesting layer to that debate. Um, you know, some of the girls have, have done that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting to hear if they talk about that. I've got a really different opinion to you on this. Go! I don't want to fall out with you over it, but Joshua Ritchie, I am worried about him going in there. And especially, he's now going to be reunited with Lewis Morrison. Now, the two of them, if you look back on at series one... yeah. They, the way they spoke to women in that series, I just did not like. Oh. And there's a lot of people who are quite angry about him as being a, a bombshell this time around because of his past behaviour. I know it was a long time ago. Yeah. Like you said, he was young. Yeah. It's a different, it's a different, um, you know, time in life, isn't it? You know, we're, we're much more aware. There's been Me Too, we, you know. Yeah. But I do, I'm really concerned that he has that kind of behaviour. I mean, I've met him before. Um, he, he's quite difficult. He's quite rude. Um, I, I just really worry about his kind of influence on that place. Even in his, uh, that kind of VT that they played before, he was like, I always get what I want. You know, he's got that arrogance about him. He will be cracking television. Mm. I have absolutely no doubt. Yeah. Um, but you know, this is, we, we've been talking about it on the podcast previously, this is a show that's for younger people. We want to have men in there who treat women yeah, with respect. True. They don't. We, there's clips that are flying around on social media this morning, showing Lewis and Joshua shouting and swearing at the girls from their series. Oh, so yeah, yeah you're, it will be interesting to see if he's changed and, yeah. and to see this new version of Joshua. He's grown up. It's like I was talking about Jake and how he matured. Yeah, coming back in for a second time. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of, um, you know, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how I mean, it plays out. I've just got my pure drama hat on here, and you're right. There are many things that we should be thinking about alongside that. Yeah. Um, and he is Georgia Harrison's ex. He is boyfriend. So, um, how is she going to react to that? She's been a lot quieter than I thought. Um, she would be. She's she's being the mixer, isn't she? In there, she's sort of stirring the pot with certain situations and yeah. getting all the goss for us. Yeah, but she hasn't made any moves at all. No, and I think that's interesting. Lou, Josh, and Omar are in there. Basically, I could like catch little bits. I couldn't really. Make but I'm used to ten is like Naomi and. I catch bits. Quite mm. disgusting, to be honest. Wait till I've had a few drinks. Oh. Listen, listen, listen. If you've got something to say, you say it to our face. Yeah. You don't they can't talk to us like that. The guy talks to f like joking, that. man. We went up there. Like we prestige. Fucking donuts, mate. Um, so one person that obviously would have experienced that firsthand is a woman who was in the villa at that moment, and you've had a chat with her. Yeah. So you've got an, a real exclusive insight into the kind of behaviour of Lewis and Joshua in there. Tell me what's gone on. So it's the most brilliant uh, Love Island uh, from series one, the winner, Jess Hayes. Woo! She spoke to this podcast to tell us all about her experiences with Lewis Morrison, uh, Hannah Elizabeth, and Joshua Ritchie. Amazing. Um, she didn't hold back I think that's fair to say um, because she has a real problem with Lewis being in there and um, with that clip we were talking about um, of the fight she was at the heart of it because it was her that had overheard Lewis and Joshua speaking really badly about the girls 
and told I told the girls all about it yeah. and uh, and then it kicked off majorly so she talks to us about that and uh, what she thinks that the guys are going to be like in there oh my god I can't wait I, th- I remember that argument so well and it was directly at me and I remember them getting so like aggressive um yeah that that wasn't right I think there was a lot it wasn't till after the you know over the years that uh, and it started to people started to think oh my god that was really bad how how Jess was treated like how they were um yeah it wasn't right I, I still to this day feel like that there were like the way I got treated as a woman in there was was poor like from some of those guys like I must admit um because I didn't see it happen in any of the other series so yeah I don't know I, I just don't think we should be glorifying people like Lewis unfortunately Josh is young he's single like and Lewis is single yeah but Josh hasn't hasn't got children at home to like have that he doesn't bother with like he's got responsibilities like come on like yeah do you know um what that argument was about could you sum it up briefly for us I don't even know I can't even remember now in the context of the argument I just remember them it was very aggressive. Oh, I overheard some of the boys in the hot tub speaking about badly about the girls, saying that we were basically like, n- like not even like decent and things like that. And I went and told the girls, I was like, you know, that's a bit like nasty. So, that, so I caught them out on their bull- basically. Um, and obviously they didn't like that. But that's me. That's that's just who I am. Like I'm just a very real no. Say it how it is. And um, oh my god, I'd love to go back in there now. <laughs> I really would. I'd have to go to the gym for six months, like maybe, you know, another time. But you know what? With Lewis, okay, there's never been any bad blood between us. Like he's always been really lovely to me. And like, even like, you know, over the years, like last few years, he's, you know, nothing bad at all. I ha- We haven't really had communication, but he'll like my stuff. And, you know, but the end, I think for me, like obviously Callie's a really good friend of mine like I love her to pieces she's she's an angel and you know what that whole thing doesn't really sit right with me so I kind of like have loyalties towards her so I'm kind of like you know just that whole sitch just doesn't sit right with me anyway so I kind of like wouldn't have like you know a friendly chat with him for that but then for him to to go ahead and you know essentially do do that to somebody else um again as a as a mother what I know I just I'm not comfortable with it and I think it's an absolute cheek that you and I wouldn't want to say ITV but I I just feel like what are you doing like you're gonna let him go on this show a dating show to find someone and what do it a third time to somebody like I'm not okay with that like as as someone that's experienced single motherhood and knows how hard it is like financially mentally physically um like I'm not okay with that like it's not a role model that's my opinion like without sounding savage like I don't you know I haven't got anything nasty to say but as a mother like I just think it's really disappointing and and from you know Kelly and Chloe's point of view I know how hard it is and, and what they've probably been through and I think it's just like why why are you putting putting someone like that on like and but what to put another girl through what they've been through essentially I just don't I just don't like it I don't like it and I don't I don't feel like it's a vibe He's also um, he's he's got um he's getting quite a lot of attention in there, isn't he? Um he's got Kaz interested, Demi's interested. Um what do you yeah, how how do you kind of feel for them? It's it must be worrying kind of watching. I don't know if you're friends with them. It's so hard because I don't know why they, they've done this, because I feel like um you know, I don't want to, I, I don't agree with trolling and hate. And I think that he's been getting a lot of that. And I, I also don't like that. But at the same time, you're literally knowing that that person's going to get that anyway. So you've put them in that position. It's bound to happen. People know the situation. Um, and as I said, like for, for someone to go for, for two, you know, amazing, beautiful young women to have gone through that already. Like is it, people like that don't change. They don't like it's, you know what? Yeah, it's and I just yeah, I don't think someone like that is a role model. 
tonight's episode, we see Joshua really get into the thick of things. Yep. So a little insight of what's coming up tonight is he will, um, in true Love Island fashion, go on some dates. Um, So the girls that he chooses to date, and I think this is very interesting, is Hannah Elizabeth. So they were obviously on the series one together. Oh, now is that that's something? A surprise. Yeah, and now is that something that they didn't explore at the time? They'll they'll know each other so well. Um, or was that like a friend pick? Yeah. What's that about? Um, he chooses Georgia Steele. Fair enough, she's gorge. Yeah. Um, and he chooses Georgia Harrison. <gasps> so is this a rekindle situation? What's she going to say about it? Georgia has such bad taste. <laughs> <laughs> she really does. No, I don't think she should go back there. Yeah. Oh, goodness. I know. This is, that's really good gossip. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit blown away by the whole Hannah Elizabeth thing. I don't really understand why he would have chosen her. Yeah. Um... And yeah, George is still that. Just that's going to be a no, isn't it? He's she's sort of she's obsessed with Toby, Tobes, Tobes. <laughs> she's saying, I like you so much. Yeah, she needs to I chill like out so with much. that. Um, yeah, I'm really interested to see these dates play out. I think yeah. we'll learn a lot quite rapidly. Maybe he takes Hannah out because he wants to be like, what's the situation with the different girls? Has oh, Georgia get the H? Gossip. Yeah. Has Georgia H talked about me? That kind of thing. <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> she hasn't mentioned you. Once. I think he he clearly has a type. Yeah, those girls are all quite similar, aren't they? So, I think that's going to be really juicy. Oh, I'm so I excited. Know. Yeah. Um, some funny things that I noticed during the episode last night. Um, my favourite moment was when uh Chris was looking for Molly, and he, I think he sort of spoke to himself out loud and said, um, "Yeah, where is she?" <laughs> At the same time as that she's having this massive big blow up with their ex, yeah. Callum. And he goes over and he sort of then starts, it starts to twig that, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, um, this is not like, a great time. It looked so awkward. Yeah. But then still kind of went for it. I mean, fair play. I know. I just, I, I think we've said this already. Like he's, he's deputizing the Maya. He's doing a great job in there. He's stirring things up. He's pulling out the questions. Yeah. But I love that he's now got a deputy deputy in Georgia Harrison. So she's doing a great she job. She is my favourite. She's like, if I've not got she's love, sorry. I'm going to do drama. Yes. So, um, you know, pushing Toby about Chloe and everything. Yeah. So Yeah, because Toby was just being a bit too inconspicuous. We needed her to say, yeah, tell us exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, but I need to ask you the most important question of the podcast today. Uh, does Chris make you snort? Wow. <laughs> Now that you ask me that, Amanda, yeah, actually, I'm just such a, I'm just such a fan of Chris. Um, I love him so much. He makes me howl with laughter yeah. every single episode. It blew my mind then, and it blows my mind now still that he didn't have any success in that villa the last time because he's so fit. Sorry to my husband. <laughs> Um, he's so fit and he's so funny um, and I'm loving this journey for him the other person I'm really really enjoying is Demi I feel like she's getting her flowers everybody fancies her everybody oh, wants her oh I'm loving her. that I know yeah um, and also uh, who was I going to talk about hang on sorry I've got a question for you just based on what you were saying there about having met Joshua before in the past and yes. not having a nice impression of yeah Tell me a story about a time that you have had a funny or awkward interaction with an islander. Oh, um, shall I tell you one? Yes, please. Yes. So I was due to once interview one of the islanders. And at this point of their career, they felt like they were worth a lot of money. And obviously, sometimes when we do these interviews, there are fees involved, sometimes there's brand dimensions involved, all that kind of thing that we do as part of their publicity and that kind of thing. And essentially, they had this figure in their head and they just wouldn't get out of bed. It was quite literally the living embodiment of, (laughs) I won't get out of bed for more than X amount. That reminded me of Gemma Collins kind of vibes. Now, my question for you is, do you think this is a boy or a girl? Diva or Devo? Um... I'm not going to tell you which it was. I, was but. Gonna, I don't know why I was thinking a guy, but it's, tell, you're not going to tell us the name. This is too much of a tease. Uh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what keep, about you? Keep them wanting more. Yeah, what about you? 
Um, awkward moments of just being, I went to Ekin Sue's uh, party. She was launching a, a, a clothing line or something. And it was a great night. She had loads of her celebrity friends there. And she wanted to do a like, kind of a quick little speech. It's very short. I thought, because I thought she was going to be really confident, but she was quite shy. Mm. And then um, for some reason, her and Dapper Day just start dancing in front of everyone and it was like you know when in Strictly when they leave and they just have that solo dance oh and yeah. everyone's kind of watching them and then they'll join yeah but no one joined <gasps> and they couldn't keep that they, they, honestly that like the, the mechanics of it they just couldn't get into a rhythm at all and yeah. it was just it was painful to watch oh, so no Strictly for Ekin or Dapper Day then I think they would love to go on it but they would be horrendous okay, I, well. I've seen that with my own eyes yeah unfortunately so no BBC to that yeah <laughs> Exactly done. Oh god, done I just lo- I just love all of them because obviously we're in quite a unique position that we bump into the islanders and we sort of see behind the veil a bit or you know see them when they're you know not putting on that front. Um, yeah. I just love all these little tales that we all have to tell. I know. And I love it. Like, have you <laughs> had people slide into your DMs or anything like that? Um, not so much DMs because I think I'm a bit too old for that, but. <laughs> Some real life, some not. real life bits and bobs, but maybe we'll save that for another day. <gasps> Exciting. Well, we've all we've got loads to look forward to in tonight's episode. Amanda, we? something what? really big is happening. <gasps> Tell me in the next Stop couple it. of days. I don't even know all the full details of this, but let's just say Love Island producers didn't just throw everything at that first episode. There's so There's much so good much stuff coming do. up. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Come back and maybe I'll be able to tell you about that then. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow for more Cracking On With The Sun and every weekday moving forwards.